Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, stay with me. Hello. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Messiah, particularly how he died for our sins. Okay. How did the Messiah die for our sins, say? I am going to learn in this class. Well, we know you the church lady. At least you, you can stop calling me the church lady. You used to be the church lady. I don't know if I used to be the church lady. I think I just took on that title because I went to church, uh, like, a lot. Yeah, a lot. So, the reason why I asked you the question is, is because you may remember what they taught you in church. What did they teach you in church? How did the Messiah die for our sins? They did teach you in that, that in church, right? We were told that... Um, the father died, went to the cross, died for our sins so that uh, he gave his life so that we wouldn't have to give our life. That was basically the um, story we were told. Did they ever go into details on how that all works? Um, I remember hearing something about um, there has to be a payment for sin and that... Um, that blood has to be the payment and so he shed his blood I don't know how now I'm thinking about it but he shed his blood so that we wouldn't have to shed ours did they go into de details any further than that I don't remember yeah, I don't and that's what them. and that's what we're gonna do in this class we're gonna go in and actually show how that worked how how was that possible how is it that he died for our sins okay I'm interested. Now, some of the other things that we hear about the Messiah dying for our sins, you know, as there's a lot of people who want to say that his death somehow erased the whole Old Testament. And now we don't have to worry about any of the laws of the Old Testament. Yeah. Those laws were done away with. Yeah, that was basically what we were told that... Um because he went and uh, died in our place, then um, the the laws, the um, commandments and things that of the Old Testament, he took them with him to the cross and did away with them. Like he erased them. Yeah. Did away with them. Did away with them, yeah. There's some people hearing that that could say, okay, well, ain't Jesus God? Yeah. If they if so, if they killed God, and that did away with all of the laws, then that's how our sins are forgiven. Is because God is dead now. They crucified him, and he took all of the sins with him. Well, I think those are the same people who you know um, follow the teachings of the Trinity. So they you know maybe believe that, or we maybe believe that um, that was. One part of it, you know, the fleshly body of him is dead. And I don't know. It was just a lot of teachings, a lot of scriptures that was thrown in, a lot of um, words that were said to make me believe that um, that the Messiah did do away with my sins, that I was no longer um, held responsible for my sins because I could just go to him and ask him to forgive me of them. So and you can he do what would. you want. I could do, not that I could do what I wanted, but that if I did, you know, anything that um, was displeasing to the Father, that the Messiah, I could just go and simply ask for forgiveness, and he was automatically going to forgive me because he loved me so much and because he died for my sins that, you know, it was an automatic thing of just, you know, basically asking for forgiveness. And, like I said, because he, he died for them, they were no longer uh, held against me. Okay, so it sounds like some of what they taught you was actually true there down at the church. Because we see over here in Hebrews chapter 9 that blood is necessary for the remission of sins. Mm-hmm. That is coming... Um, from when they would offer a sacrifice um, because of the um, sins that they went out and committed, the priests would offer a sacrifice on behalf of the people, right? Yeah, that's right. Every time 
you wanted sins to be forgiven in the Old Testament, they always did some type of blood sacrifice. And that very well could be why Cain's offering wasn't accepted because it didn't cleanse away the sin that he had committed, whereas Abel's sacrifice, which contained blood, did cleanse him of his sin. Okay, so, but I see nowhere throughout Scripture where the Messiah shed blood. I mean, he was beat, but, you know, they, but there was, well, I guess, are they going back with the blood and water thing that well, came from his side? Well, you're actually getting a little bit ahead of us. Okay. So, we'll, we'll, that's going to be actually the main topic on whether or not or how the Messiah actually shed blood. But first thing I want to do is jump over and look at this word remission because I'm not sure I understand what it means. Mm -hmm. What does remission mean? Um, according to Google, remission is the cancellation of a debt, of a charge, or a penalty. So when it's saying over here in Hebrews uh, chapter 9, it's saying that blood will actually cancel out those sins that have been committed. So with the shedding of blood, all of our sins can be counseled. Yeah, according to um, that definition. Mm -hmm. And when we look at some of the other verses over in Hebrews in chapter 9, we see it in verse 19 where it's talking about how Moses used this blood. Yeah, he used it, according to Hebrews 19, to um, sprinkle the blood not only on... Um, I believe on the ground, but he sprinkled it on the people as well. The, the people, the altar, the tabernacle walls, these guys were slinging blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Notice how verse 20 said it was the blood of the testament. Okay, the testament is, I guess we would call it an agreement. Yeah, so that would be the Old Testament, what we would call the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so what it's saying here is that the Old Testament involved the blood of calves and goats and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that actually gets us closer to our point, because when you come over to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28, it's talking about the blood of the New Testament. Yeah, it says Matthew 26 and 28 says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So there you have it. What you were talking about earlier on whether the Messiah had actually shed blood. We see here that he shed his own blood for the remission of sins. It says in 27, it says, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. That's talking about wine, right? Yep, and you like getting a little ahead of us, don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you like being on the leading edge of this conversation, which is okay, because here is the connection. I was hoping to develop it a little bit more, but we'll jump right into this. This is actually how the Messiah actually died for our sins. You have the shedding of his blood, but then we see in verse 27 that he's making a connection between the Passover wine and his blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's back up just a little bit because we need to understand that the Messiah being placed on the cross was a substitution for that lamb that had been used previously. Those calves and those lambs that had been used According to Leviticus, to cleanse away our sins, now you have the Messiah who is now standing in for that calf. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can understand that, but that he's standing in, but where does the blood come in? His blood. Okay. So this is the blood that was um, the water and the blood that came out. Is that the blood? Because where... Where else is this blood coming from? Well, I guess you could think of it like that. The way I was thinking of it was the fact that they killed him at all. The okay. fact that when we say shed blood, we're talking about killing somebody. Okay. It may not necessarily mean cutting their throat right. and letting them bleed out like you would a calf or like a lamb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I do see your point is where is the blood? Yeah. Well, 
that's what brings us to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 27. The wine is his blood. Yeah, that is what it is saying. And I, I don't know how I never looked at it like that, but that is what it's saying. They are drinking, and he said, for this is my blood. So he transformed his blood into wine. The same way over in the book of John in chapter 2, where he changed water into wine. Mm. During the Last Supper, he actually turned his blood into wine. Because if you remember, we were told to do this in remembrance of him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, essentially what's going on here is that the Messiah, who has now changed his blood into wine, is now giving us the opportunity to partake in this remission of sins every year during the Passover feast. So, every year when we have communion, we are essentially having the remission, having our sins canceled out um, when we take of the wine. Absolutely. Now, to back up a little bit, we have to remember baptism. We see in Luke chapter 3 and verse 3 that baptism of repentance is for the remission of sins. So, baptism is for canceling out sins as well. Absolutely. So, the way this all works is the same way it did in the Old Testament with a brick and mortar temple. When they consecrated that temple or dedicated that temple, the same way that Solomon did and Moses did, is they would come in and sprinkle blood all over the temple and the altar and everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what that was part of the dedication process. Right. Well, that's what baptism is. Okay. Baptism is when your spiritual temple is actually dedicated. Into the new covenant. All right. Matter of fact, let's come over here to the book called The Shepherd of Hermas and see how it talks about baptism. All right. We're here in the second part of the book of Hermas called His Commands. And we're going to jump down to command four on or about verse 18 when Hermas is actually asking the shepherd about baptism. Mm hmm. You see right there in verse 18 where he says that he has heard from certain teachers that there is no other repentance besides that of baptism. Right. Yeah. When we go down into the water and receive the forgiveness of our sins. So this is actually what the new covenant is all about. Like we were reading over there in Hebrews when it was comparing the new covenant with the old covenant. The old covenant in order to get our temples purified we have to sprinkle blood all over the place in the new covenant our temple is purified through baptism right yeah i'm seeing that we need to let that sink in that this is actually the main element of the new covenant is baptism that's what's different from the old covenant and the new covenant yeah i believe the angel um goes on to tell him that he was right um uh, that those who taught this was right. But then he said, um, well, 19 says, and he said unto me, thou has been rightly informed. Nevertheless, seeing now you inquire diligent of all, I will manifest this also unto thee. And 20 says, neither for neither they who have newly believed or shall thereafter believe have any repentance of sin, but forgiveness of them. So is this saying, that we are to renew our act of baptism every year? Well, kind of, because you have to remember that John the Baptist is the one who actually introduced baptism three years before the Messiah shed his blood for our sins. Yeah. So during that period between when 
John the Baptist instituted baptism and the Messiah was crucified, then yeah, you would have had to get baptized every year for the remission of your sins. Otherwise, you would have had to have gone and found you a goat or a sheep. I guess my um, misunderstanding of this is coming. I'm wondering if we are to drink the wine and the river wine is a symbol of our counseling out of our sins. Right? Get ahead of us again, buddy. Uh, all right. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you want to finish my question? Go ahead. I'm wondering if, why are we still doing baptism? Is it both, are both necessary or is it just one? <laughs> okay, go back. Baptism brings you into the new covenant. Baptism is necessary to introduce you into the new covenant. That's why you've always heard in church never to take the communion wine if you had not been baptized before. Yeah, that's why, you know, a lot of times they would ask you um, if you had been baptized before you were able to take it. And if you haven't. They wouldn't give it to you. Because you're talking. not in the new covenant. You're okay. still in the old covenant when before you get baptized. Okay. So then after you get baptized, now you can partake in the communion wine every year for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the Messiah did for us. That's actually how his blood was shed for us is that now his blood stands in for the forgiveness of sins, but he transformed his blood into wine. And so now we partake in the Passover wine every year in order to be cleansed. That's, of That's the remembrance, remembering uh, to do this in remembrance of him. Because we are still a sinful people. We are still transgressing the law from time to time, mm -hmm. just like the temple of old would have gotten defiled Throughout the year, back in Moses' and Solomon's time, they would have come in every year and re-cleansed the temple. Well, that is why we have to drink the Passover wine in order to purify our temple every year. Every year during the Passover, when we do the communion, we actually get a clean slate. Just like in the old days when they sprinkled blood on the walls of the temple and on us and on everything else. So this drinking of the wine is a very important part. It's a, one of the most important parts of um, the Passover feast. Along with the bread, that is actually the most important part of the Passover feast. In fact, that's what Passover is all about. When you think about the two different feasts that are talked about in the first month, Passover and the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread was a week-long feast. That started after Passover. Passover in itself was all about the shedding of the blood for the purification of the temple. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas before the whole day was about dispatching, processing and cooking of this lamb. Now that the Messiah has stood in as the replacement for that lamb. And instituted the new covenant, which includes the communion festival. Now, the Passover celebration is all about the communion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is during that communion that we actually get the remission of our sins that we have committed since the last Passover or since we were baptized. Yeah. Very important. Very important. Yeah. I never thought about it like that. Um, that it was during this, um, during this um, feast that we got the counseling out of our, our, our sins. I knew that word remission was in there, but I never thought about it. How this feast was so important as far as that aspect. Um, the counseling out of our sins. I always uh, thought of that as the Feast of Atonement. Um, but 
I see that this is this Passover feast is what it's all about as far as um, counseling out of our sins as well. Atonement Day will be associated with our sins, but I don't know if I would call it a counseling out. That would be more like a paying of restitution for the sins. That's the time when humanity is actually going to have to pay for the sins. So, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about it. You know, if those who celebrate during this time, um, who don't, rather, who don't celebrate Passover, you know, and do, I guess, Easter, or, or they won't have this opportunity to have um, their sins forgiven. No, they won't. And that's why we're doing this class, bringing out the importance of Passover, because if you don't partake in the Passover celebration, then that's equivalent to not being baptized at all. You're not in the new covenant at all. Hmm. You're not even enjoying the benefits of having the Messiah die for us at all. Right. You know, a lot of times we do these feasts and we do them just out of obedience and not necessarily knowing why we should do them. Um, but I think, you know, obedience is, you know, the father says, well, the master says obedience is better than sacrifice. But I believe you do have to know the reason why you are celebrating the feast, because like you were saying, you know, even before this class, I'm just doing the feast out of obedience, not diving into exactly why we are supposed to do Passover and what does it mean. And now I'm seeing that it's very, very, very important to um, to do it, to drink the wine, to to know why I'm doing Passover. And that's why the Harlot Church is doing so much to stamp out Passover and to replace it with Easter is because the powers that control this world don't want us taking advantage of this remission of sins at all. As long as we're in this sin state, mm -hmm. Satan can have his way with us. Yeah, how can you have sin all over you and go before the Father and plead on your behalf and, you know, you you still have sin, you know, within you. Does that make sense? That makes sense because sin separates us. Yeah. Sin mm -hmm. creates a distance between us and the Father. Right. But, praise the Lord, we have the Passover wine, the communion wine, every year that actually cleanses us of those stains and counsels out those sins for us. Every year. Yeah. We get a clean slate every year during Passover. So go out and get you some wine or, you know, you got time to make you so. <laughs> but now before we get off of this topic, I think it's necessary to talk about verse 29 out of Matthew chapter 26. Okay, well, let me read it. It says, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. This is actually talking about the marriage supper. Mm -hmm. The father, the Messiah, gave us this wine back there 2,000 some odd years ago. But like we read here, he said he wasn't going to drink it until we reach the father's kingdom. Okay. Why is it? Why is he not going to partake it until... Um, he says, "Until I will drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Well, the main reason why he didn't drink the wine was because he didn't drink wine. Right. He was a Nazarite. Right. Right. He, he, took, he had taken the vow of the Nazarite, so he was forbidden from drinking wine altogether. Mm -hmm. But then he says here that he's actually going to drink it with us in the Father's kingdom. Yes. This is the marriage supper when... He and the bride will partake in the communion wine together. Right. Mm -hmm. So makes this. Hmm? I was saying makes sense. Yeah. So so this lends to the importance, even more importance of keeping Passover because we know that this day is coming. Yeah. One day we're going to have the marriage supper. 
which will be the uniting of our spirits with the Father's spirit, mm -hmm. that true day when we recognize the kingdom of heaven or the third temple, well, that day very well could go down on Passover. In fact, if you do a search for marriage, supper, and Passover, you see that there's a lot of teachers out there that teaches a connection between Passover and the marriage supper. Right. As if the Passover is still yet incomplete because we're waiting for that day in which the Messiah will drink the wine with us. Mm -hmm. But until that day, we'll eat the bread and we'll drink the wine in anticipation of that day and in the meantime we'll just get remission of our sins every year yeah so that's how the messiah actually died for our sins mm -hmm. it's not that he did away with the laws making it acceptable to sin anytime we want mm -hmm. he didn't change anything yeah yeah i'm wondering where you know and that's another class where did they come up with that um, how did they get doing away with the law um, and remission of our sins? How does those two come together? But that's another class. Yeah, well, you know, that's not the case because when we look over in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, we see that the Messiah didn't change anything about the law. Mm -hmm. We see he didn't change not even a jot or a tittle of the law. He says that the law will not pass away until even after the earth has passed away. Will we still have the law? Yeah, and as as of this morning, I was still walking around on the ground. Yeah, and... the earth's still here, <laughs> so the law must still be here too. Right. So we know that's not the case. He does. He didn't give us a free pass to sin anytime he wanted. The way he died for our sins is that now we can partake in the Passover wine and get our sins canceled out. Right. Yep. I think you have um, the word has clearly stated that. And, you know, it's plain to see that I think the key is in that word uh, remission. Knowing what that means and uh, knowing exactly why we are celebrating the feast of Passover. So to recap, the way it all works is, according to the new covenant, is a person is baptized into the new covenant where they get forgiveness and or remission of their sins that they have committed in their lifetime, maybe even in their previous lifetimes. And by doing so, they get a clean slate, bringing them closer to where the father is allowing them in their new sinless state to become spiritualized and have a spirit to spirit relationship with the father. Because like we said, sin is what separates us from that and doesn't allow us to have that relationship. Now that this person is baptized and cleansed of all of their previous sins, they can become spiritualized and have this relationship with the father. And from that day forward, they will renew that covenant and again get a clean slate by way of the Passover wine that they'll drink every year. Yeah. Yeah. And it is because of what the Messiah did and his dying on the cross that makes that all possible. Yeah. If it were not for him shedding his blood, dying on the cross, none of this would have been possible at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you understand how the Messiah died for your sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's up to you to take advantage of that. Yeah. And how will you take advantage of it? By doing Passover. By, By doing drinking Passover. Of the wine. Don't um. Don't fall into the um. Teaching of Easter. You know, don't fall into the teaching that these feasts aren't necessary. They're very necessary, and like you said. How we are led to believe that, you know, the feasts aren't necessary. But, you know, this 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 is important. Having your sins forgiven, I mean, canceled out. Canceled. Yeah. You and that saying? Easter bunny ain't going to cancel nothing out. Nah. Ain't going to cancel nothing <laughs> out. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> All right. So if you haven't been baptized, we'll tell you that that's the first thing that you must do in order to enter this new covenant. But I'll bring that up to tell you that it's not necessary that you do so down at the local church. I was. Yeah, I was hoping you would say that. You can actually baptize your spouse or your spouse can baptize you. Right. Um, we've baptized our children before mm -hmm. and your child can actually baptize you if that's the case. Mm -hmm. The power is not in the person in right. the robe with the big cross on, you know, down there. That, there is no power in that person or that robe at all. Right. The power is actually in the water. Yes. All right. So anybody can baptize. The scripture does suggest that you find a stream first. And if you can't find a stream of running water to be baptized in, to be baptized in cold water. Mm -hmm. Where can I find that at? Do you, what's, um, because that's not in the canonized books, I believe. Oh, here comes Stump the Chump, y'all. <laughs> My favorite game. For that, you would have to come over to a book called... How do you pronounce that, Steve? Uh, Di... Didache? Are the teachings of the 12 apostles. That's what we'll go with. The teachings of the 12 apostles. And when we look down in chapter 7. It tells us that we should be baptized in running water. If you would go ahead and read verse 1. Verse 1. But concerning baptism. Thus baptize you. Having first recited all these precepts. Baptized in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. In running water. So we could probably end up doing another class on this. You see how it's talking about having recited all of these precepts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about baptism and what those precepts are that we are supposed to be reciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then read verse 2. But if thou hast not running water, baptize in some other water. And if thou canst not baptize in cold, in warm water. So this reminds me of the day I was baptized. Yeah, um, you shared that testimony about how you was baptized in the hills, the mountains of West Virginia in ice cold water. In ice cold water. They actually went out there the day of the baptism and broke two inches of ice off that pool of water. Wow, you were brave. <laughs> or crazy. <laughs> or obedient. I would just tell do what they said do. They all had on waiters. They had all the, the priests all had official waiters, so they were prepared. But there was three of us going in that water, and I don't know if we was prepared at all, <laughs> because all we had on was white robes and underwear. <laughs> but to their defense, you said they did have hot blankets ready for you guys. And they kept the church pretty hot to where everybody else in the congregation was sweating and complaining <laughs> that it was so hot in there. <laughs> But anyway, so now we see why it was that the Father put us through that, that it, because the scripture says to be baptized in cold water. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so the chump has survived another stump the chump session. Mm -hmm. I bet I can come up with some more. No, I don't. <laughs> Finding this did actually was hard enough. <laughs> so when it comes to baptism, it's not that the person doing the baptism is important. We see here that reciting the precepts, which one may go in and read the Dachi chapter 6 maybe to find these precepts, and being baptized in the right water is actually what's important. So, mm -hmm. if you haven't been baptized at all, maybe you should consider uh, getting a friend or a relative to baptize you, and then from then on, you partake in the Passover wine to stay purified of your sins every year so that we can all enjoy the new covenant until the day in which our Messiah will come and enjoy the wine with us and we'll enter that marriage supper. Yeah, it's just so much I'm thinking about this because, you know, starting to think, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about we are getting the counseling out of our sins, but, you know, my mind immediately goes to the book of Hermas where it tells us, you know, just because our sins are being counseled out, that doesn't give us leeway to just continue to sin. But that's another class as well. Yeah, speaking of another <laughs> class, I'm looking down here, some more of this baptism stuff in here. And, yeah, look how it says, pour water three times on the head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could be an interesting class on baptism. We'll do that next. Okay. So you guys make sure y'all hit the subscribe button so y'all can see when that class comes out because it looks like, 
this the dachi could have some good information on baptism but in the meantime we could get prepared for a passover mm -hmm. which passover in the year 2021 falls on april the 26th that may be a surprise to some of you guys but you can check out classes that we've done on how the jewish calendar is a fixed calendar and is projecting passover in the wrong month this year but that too we'll cover in another class as we've done in previous classes as we get closer to that date so we would encourage you all to um make sure that you include um the wine as part of the passover feast to not forget that part that very important part the bread is important too and Getting unleavened bread is not as easy as you would think it would be. You probably have to make it. So given that, that we have some time to do so, you might want to start looking up some unleavened bread recipes in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, or anything you can add, please do so in the comment section below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to remember to hit that subscribe button for our next upcoming baptism class and the like button as well and with that shalom shalom